one thing that people need to do that's very, very simple is just actually listen to what the other side is saying and then come up with a rational argument against it. Now you see, in this, our modern digital age, more specifically the social media age, anytime someone presents conflicting information or a conflicting viewpoint, the response that you get is a laugh emoji, which totally debunks what you just said. And I'm fairly certain that every single one of us has encountered this at some point in their life online, or someone just calling you names or making fun of you because they either cannot be bothered or simply cannot argue against what it is that you're saying. And the worst part is, is when people try to pretend that's what they're doing when they're not. They look at it in the most simplistic, superficial way possible and then turn that around and use that as the basis for an argument against what you're saying. It's like, okay, do you remember the argument that basically every anti-Marxist has ever made? Okay, so let's say I have a, a, a store. You know, you know, why can't I just have two stores that sell things? And this is coming from a person who claims that they read Capital. So they read the part about how private accumulation of capital is detrimental to human life and goes into detail of what, that, of what happens when you allow it. It describes the process of capital accumulation, the process of monopoly, etc., and all of that. And yet they still, when they're arguing against you, come back with, so why can't I own two stores? Which very clearly indicates that they didn't read the manual at all. I mean, this is like a first day communist kid question. And this is coming from someone who claims that they know all about Marxism and can debunk it. When they can't even answer their own question where the answer is in the thing that they claim that they read. Like, I, I'm sure that we've all experienced this at some point or another. Here's another good example. It is not unknown for liberals to make really bad arguments for things. And then those arguments end up being laughed at by conservatives who don't actually demonstrate how it's wrong. And then usually do nothing but what's known as shit flinging and harassment and claim that that's somehow an argument or make an appeal to the Bible. That's another video for another video for another day. And then usually a Marxist can come along and give a rational argument explaining why that liberal position is incorrect. And then you just get accused of being anti whatever it is that you're talking about. And there's a ton of Marxists that are very, very guilty of this as well. Like if I said, as I did in a previous video, you know, make the pride parade either family friendly or make it an, an 18 plus thing, just one or the other, or have it be family friendly up until eight o'clock. And then after that, it's adults only. Just don't do the adults only stuff in front of children and then get accused of being homophobic when you're bisexual yourself. When the only argument you made was don't do sexual things in front of children, but somehow that makes you homophobic, which makes no sense whatsoever because you weren't arguing against people's rights as sexual minorities. But f for some reason that does make you a homophobe. Here's a prime example. You know, now, you may remember this. Um, quite a few years ago, there was uh, a black woman who came out with a video, and obviously a, a liberal, saying that time was racist. And of course, she got ridiculed mercilessly for saying something like that. Time, was, time is racist. And they say, well, time has nothing to do with race. You're an idiot. 
blah 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 she got ridiculed harassed etc but um I didn't see anybody make an actual argument against what she was saying because you would have to know what her argument was now here's the thing she was wrong she was wrong time is not racist but I can explain why her position was incorrect. And I can do that because I actually listened to the argument that she was making. Here's what she said. In Africa, before colonization, any work that was to be done was done between sunrise and sunset. Because that's when you could see. Whether that be, you know, hunting, uh, hunting or gathering or making things building, whatever. And then Europeans came along with colonization and then introduced things like working in mines and a lot of it, to some degree, a form of industrialization, which included shift work. And for shift work, you need clocks and you need a concept of time. That being a a clock in 24 hours in a day, which many African peoples did not have because they didn't actually need it because it was work from sunrise to sunset when you could see. So then the concept of hours, minutes, seconds came in and that when they were forced to go in or yeah, forced to, to work into these places according to these shifts, that time, that shift work was considered racist because it, that process of moving them from living off the land to going into wage labor was putting them on a clock, so therefore it's racist. Now, the argument is wrong because shift work didn't come about as a result of white people. It came about as a result of economic development. In the process of industrialization, economics, etc. And that grew into monopoly. And monopoly facilitated colonialism. Profits, the profit motive, facilitated colonialism. And then on to imperialism, etc. Had it been Africa that developed first, they would have done colonialism to Europe basically the same way and for the same reasons they didn't go there because they were black and forced them to live on a clock because they were black they did it to extract profits to extract wealth and value because the system demanded that they do that because that's how the system worked and that was the prevailing economic system so you could say, in a way, capitalism or early capitalism made them do that, not race. So the whole foundation of this being time is racist because European colonization brought in clocks and standardized time is completely facetious because it didn't happen because of race. It happened because of economic development, independent of race. Now that came to affect race, but it didn't happen because of race and would have happened had the racial situation been the other way around because that's how economic development works. So the whole argument is completely fraudulent and completely takes this phenomenon, this thing that happens and completely removes it from its historical context and places it in a completely, completely devoid of all the other forces it existed in at the time. Well, this would be the anti-Marxist approach. This would be the anti-materialist approach. This would be the liberal approach, which is why we got a liberal answer to a real world problem. That is why she would be wrong and that time is not racist, not simply because time has nothing to do with race, therefore you are stupid. You have to understand the argument someone is trying to make 
before you can really understand why they're wrong. Even if you think it just sounds really dumb, there's an argument there and you have to know how to defeat it. All you have to really do is listen, know the argument and then argue against it. I don't think it's too much to ask to just listen to what the other side is trying to say and then explain it. For example, I made the argument that prostitution was bad. Here is decades upon decades of academic and scientific research that shows the harms that prostitution does to society. And what was I met with? No one wants your vile male opinion. Oh, I'm sorry, science is male. Including all of the female researchers and scientists who engaged in all this research. Well, that, that, that's a really interesting way of saying you're a fucking idiot that has no idea what they're talking about. That's a very liberal approach to just dismiss because of your emotional response. That's the same kind of thing. So it's really not too much to ask to just simply listen to the argument that's being made and then counter it. Now, of course, you can't be doing this all day every day because ain't nobody got time for that. But at least when it's important enough, you could at least listen out and counter that argument, especially if it's something like doing a video reply to someone or doing a video reply to a black woman calling her stupid because she said time was racist without even, even understanding what it is that she said to begin with. If you're going to take the time to reply, at least know what you're talking about before you do it. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.